For quite a few years, I was struggling with a skin issue that I diagnosed as histamine intolerance. And I did that because I, would, I kept breaking out from certain foods. For a long time, I couldn't figure out what it was. The only thing I, I pretty much had correlated it with was drinking coffee. So I, was, I thought it was the coffee. So whenever I would drink too much coffee, I, I would start to break out. And then if I cut back on the coffee, I would not break out. So I figured it was the coffee. Over time, I realized that the coffee was not the issue because I started breaking out to more and more stuff. And it, a couple of, and probably about two or three years ago, it got ridiculous. I was just breaking out to everything. And it was, they were big, just big red blotches. They might've been hives. It's hard to know what they were, but on, when they were on my neck, they were more like a hive. When they were on my face, they could be a lot of different textures, almost a lot of different sizes, but they could get pretty freaking big. And you know, who wants big red blotches on their face? So doing a lot of research and I was down to two possibilities. One was uh, FODMAPs, uh, and FODMAPs, and I guess the FODMAP diet was was um, popular for a while. Maybe it still is. I don't know. Um, but I was, so I was down to the FODMAP and then histamine intolerant. Uh, so FODMAP is uh, fermentable foods, uh, olus, olig oligosaccharides, which are fructans, galactans. Uh, they're in grains, vegetables, and beans. I think these are also sort of all, all like medium chain carbohydrates or something along those lines, but I can't remember anymore. Disaccharides, which is in la lactose, which is in dairy. Monosaccharides, which is fructose. Uh, it's in fruit and vegetables. And polyols, sorbitol, monitol. I can't read my handwriting anymore, which are all artificial sweeteners. And then, of course, you had gluten and FODMAPs often coexisted in the same products. So it was always hard to figure out what exactly I was reacting to because there was a lot of, there was a lot of overlap. And over time, I pretty much narrowed it down to a histamine issue. Because if I, start, if I took a histamine after a food that I knew was gonna make me break out, I would break out, I would either not break out or break out a lot less. That didn't always work, but it worked pretty well. So something was then. So then you have different uh, categories of histamines. You have food that are naturally high in histamines. You have food that they call uh, are histamine liberators, meaning they cause your cells to release to excess histamine. And then there are foods that prevent you from breaking down the histamine. So it's hard again. Again, it's hard to know what's going on. And then of course, what do you do? You just do an, an elimination diet. So the fascinating thing was nothing was really working. Uh, I was avoiding a lot of food and it was really limiting my food choices. So, and then I got tested for gluten. I did like an oral test, DNA test that you, you do the swab, you send it into the lab and they tell you, and I had three out of the four gluten genes. So technically I'm gluten sensitive. Uh, I don't really get sick when I eat gluten. I can have a bagel, uh, something like that. I, I don't go overboard. However, I will, if I eat too much, if I kind of eat too much pizza or something like that, um, or too much bread, which is rare, uh, I will feel it the next day. Uh, I Digestion-wise, it doesn't feel great. However, the interesting thing was, I was in Seattle about a year and a half ago, and I was in, I was there for a PRI seminar, actually. And I went hiking before that. So I took a couple of days off. I went, I think in uh, Mount Olympia or no, 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 the Olymp um, Olympic National Park or Olympia National Park, something like that. And I brought an old pair of sneakers with me. And when I was going about to go hiking for the first time, I got my old pair of sneakers, I put them on and I thought, oh my goodness, there's my arches. And I, I just, this sensation of sensing my arches really just you know, it took me by surprise because I had never felt that before. And this was after I had gotten my first pair of glasses. So I had already gotten my first pair of glasses. So my visual system was at least functioning now, even though I didn't know I still had an overactive right eye. But my, my visual system was functioning to a better degree. Uh, my feet, I still didn't have orthotics at that point, but I had put on my old pair of sneakers, which had a higher arch. And I felt my, 
my uh, my arches big time. And it felt great, so I just wore those. And interestingly, I was in Seattle later on, and I always travel with antihistamine. So, because when you eat at, when you're traveling, it's very hard to make, you can't really make your own food. So you're kind of at the mercy of uh, being, eating, eating out at restaurants. And of course, they're always gonna be using cooking oils. So the food that really makes me break out, or used to, were these cooking oils. And of course, that's used soybean oil, cottonseed oil, any type of vegetable oil that's used for cooking. I was good with olive oil, I was good with butter, avocado oil, and coconut oil. So I was good with those, but anything else would make me break out. And I didn't, so I was out in Seattle. I didn't have any hist any histamines with me. I said, screw it. Uh, and I remember when I put those sneakers on, I felt good. I felt my arches, I felt grounded, I felt good. And I didn't break out. So I kept testing this. Depending on what I was wearing on my feet, what my, it would affect how my skin or how I reacted to different food. And I remember I took it so for granted that if I was wearing a good pair of sneakers, uh, I could eat something with some. I could eat something with a food that would normally make me break out, and I wouldn't break out. And I remember I was at um, Thanksgiving. I said that to my cousin, who was in the skincare has a kind of a skincare company of her own, and she was like, "Wait, what?" Because she, she asked if I was going to break out to the the food that we were having. I said, "No, I'm wearing I'm wearing sneakers with arches, so no." To her, that was like, what the hell are you talking about? To me, it was just, yeah, of course. At any rate, since I got my glasses that increased my awareness of the ground, so I'm now much better grounded because the visual system is taken care of, my feet were taken care of by bringing the ground up to me, my brain was sensing the ground, my was not, so now I'm no longer living in that state of tension because I couldn't sense the ground, uh, the tension in my body has dropped, and as a result, I'm really not breaking out anymore. I can pretty much eat whatever I want. I still eat a pretty good diet, so I'm not going overboard with stuff, but I don't have to work. I love Mexican food, and I love chips and salsa, uh, but I can go out and eat and not break out and without taking any type of antihistamine. So it's just one of those fascinating corollaries of my story is that as I've gotten more and more grounded through you know, unlocking my neck and my cranium through getting glasses that allow me, a prescription that allowed me to sense the ground on the left, and then also having to bring the floor up to me through orthotics because I couldn't sense it through non-orthotic means. All of that allowed my body to relax and my tension dropped so that I'm no longer, um, I'm, no, I'm no longer reacting to these foods that I used to previously react to. I would say the main thing that I still will break out to is if I have sugar on an empty stomach. And I don't eat that much sugar, but I do like coffee. And I'll have coffee in the morning with some sugar. And when I do that, I don't always cook breakfast first. But if I cook breakfast first and I have food in my stomach, I'll be good to go. So the only thing I'm really breaking out to these days is if I have coffee with sugar on an empty stomach, if I probably if I drank soda on an empty stomach, or soda at all, maybe that would be a little bit too much sugar. So I would just say sugar overall is more likely to make cause me to, to break out just a little, little bit. Not, I mean, I used to get gigantic things. Nowadays, if I get something, it's generally pretty small. So that's just another interesting aspect of getting grounded and reducing tension in your body that I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person this is happening to. As much as I think I'm you know, a unique individual. I can't be the only person who has food sensitivities that are being caused by excessive tension in their body. I have a, a sneaking suspicion that would have to do with also with the vagus nerve because the vagus nerve not only comes out of your cranium and is dealing with all the information, sensory information up here, but it goes all into almost every, if you've ever seen a picture of the vagus nerve, it branches into almost every major organ and then into your gut. Uh, and it's constantly checking out the, um, the environment for threat, uh, when, it's, when it's activated properly, you stay calm. When it's activated improperly and it has to be too vigorous and it's in a state of alarm, you'll be in a state of alarm. Uh, and so that is just a quick story about how PRIs and the process of getting grounded has affected me in a positive way that's just beyond purely physical.